Well, let's get cracking. Um, first and foremost, obviously, thanks to everyone who's joined um, so far. Um, if at any point you need to drop off for whatever reason, we'll be sharing these slides afterwards as well. But hopefully you'll find a lot of the answers um, that you're looking for today, at least around SEO content. Can't necessarily help you on uh, other walks of life. But um, the, the subject today that we're going to be touching on is how to increase revenue through organic search um, by up to 114%. And I'll actually show you um, an example of where that's happened using SEO content. So I'm Alex, I'm the head of marketing at Sales for Startups, which is a sales consultancy that works closely with B2B tech companies, um, predominantly at the pre-seed, seed and series A stage. But more importantly, today I've got with me Adam. Adam is co-founder of Inflow.ai. And um, yeah, Adam, don't know if you wanted to um, give us a little bit of an intro into yourself and what you and the team are building over at Inflow. Yeah, absolutely. So hi, everyone. Welcome to, to the webinar. Trying to make this obviously as, as practical as we possibly can. So, you know, stop us at any point um, and ask any questions. Uh, yeah, we'll be sharing the slides after just seeing that question from Lucy. Um, to, so I set up Inflow uh, with my business partner uh, six, seven years ago, we are an SEO content creation platform. So we make it a lot easier um, for marketing teams, marketing managers to produce their own articles and blogs, um, which is uh, a huge hassle for a lot of businesses. Uh, kind of two, two major benefits of that um, is the, the time saving involved in producing articles and blogs. It does take time. We've all been there. Uh, yeah. And secondly, um, is that kind of performance piece, uh, organic performance, uh, it bringing in leads, it being a reliable engine and machine um, that brings in leads kind of week after week, month after month. Um, so they're the two benefits. So Inflow didn't start off, didn't suddenly think uh, of the idea of creating a end-to-end -end SEO content creation platform suddenly one evening. Um, over a cup of tea, it was, it's definitely been a journey uh, for us um, and like many technology businesses to, to work out how we can offer more and more value. Um, so I think, you know, we've, we've now invested about four or five million pounds into, our, into the technology. We've got an amazing uh, team of engineers who, who, have, who continue to listen to the market, continue to listen to customers and uh, iterate the product. So uh, you know, very proud of what they've done. and. Um, you know, we are built for marketing teams. That's that's what we do. Um, we work in different sectors, uh, including professional services, um, including technology. We work a lot with agencies as well, and we're designed to to support you know SMEs, um, like many many businesses on the call here. We want to grow, but don't have the budgets of uh, of Nike, let's say, or whatever it is, a huge 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 enterprise businesses. So. Um, very excited to try and offer some some value today to, to everyone here on the call. Well, much appreciate you giving up your time, Adam. Um, and I think you're the person who everyone is is here to see rather than myself. But what, what I'll do is I, I kind of um, want to reiterate why hopefully some of us are here. Um, of course, I'd, I'd be interested to hear any of your any of your comments, feedback, questions um, in the, in the chat. Um, but I think in, in terms of, uh, you know, SEO content, it's something that generally speaking, a lot of people know is valuable to their business. Um, how valuable it is, I think, can be put into a couple of numbers. The first one is that, you know, 93% of all online experiences start with a search engine. I mean, that's probably quite unsurprising when you consider what your homepage might be when you open up your Chrome, your Firefox, or for those of us that are still on Internet Explorer. But I think it just goes to show that your presence, your profile on those search engines is going to be crucial if you're looking to capture any formidable volume of traffic or, or audience. Um, and it's not just where the customers are, but actually where we hear a lot of success from as well. 57% of B2B marketers say that organic search is a channel and SEO content 
is the number one performing channel for them at their business. Um, so it's not just myself and Adam that are singing its praises, but actually the majority of B2B marketers also report the same thing. And last but not least as well, as you can imagine, people that are coming through organic search, you know, you're not dragging them kicking and screaming through advertising or cold calling them or whatever it might be. There's absolutely a place and a time for that. But 14.6% conversion rate through organic search compared to other channels such as, you know, outbound, which I think is closer to something like 1.7. So that just shows you the gulf in intent that if you get right, can really, really drive organic search revenue at your startup. Um, so a couple of points on what we're going to cover today. We're going to do a really quick intro to SEO. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I don't think everyone's here to listen to me drone on and on about what SEO is and the definitions of it. But it's just to really frame, you know, specifically what we are talking about and what we're not today just so that people have a bit of context. And for those who really are quite you know, fresh to this um, area of marketing. Secondly, we're gonna be looking at a real case, a real case study of how SEO can benefit your business. So it's not just some kind of black box where um, generally speaking, if you do these things, good things will happen. No, we'll show you concrete figures and stats about how um, SEO content can benefit tech businesses. Um, third and fourth, and this is definitely going to be more of Adam's domain, I think, because he's the expert, but we're going to be talking about, you know, the types of things that you really want to tick off before you run headfirst into SEO content. Last but not least, we promised that this would be practical. We promised that it would be um, something that you can take away and apply to your business, you know, straight away after this. So Adam's going to be sharing some of his top tips and tricks into creating an optimized post when it comes to SEO content. Um, but before we jump into that, you know, before we, before we kick things off, really interested to know how many of you on the call have or are a dedicated marketing resource at your business. Um, and also what you think some of your main challenges are that you're experiencing when it comes to SEO or when it comes to organic content. Um, so yeah, I think give you guys a chance to, um, to, to, to type in some responses into the chat. Um, while you guys are doing that, I can certainly kick things off myself as a dedicated marketing resource within sales for startups. Um, I'd definitely say for me, the main challenge when it comes to organic content it's, it's time, it's, it's the time that's dedicated to production. And I think before we leverage a tool like Inflow, when you're trying to do it haphazardly, when you're trying to do it off the cuff, um, it can be really tricky to, to do SEO in a, in, a, in a systematic way that delivers results. So I think for me personally, my main challenge really was, was time. I, I mean, I'm curious to hear what you think, Adam, or what some of your clients often say as well are the, are the main challenges. Yeah, absolutely. I can see a lot of um, responses already agreeing with you around time, but specifically um, keyword research. And it, you know, it is tricky to do keyword research well. Um, there's lots of questions in that process. Um, you've got to think about obviously your customer all the way through that. You've got to work out, um, you've got to be very clear on what you do as a business, the products and services that you offer what's unique, what are the right opportunities. Um, then there's a few things in the research, such as uh, you know, looking at search volume. Is there sufficient search volume um, for those keywords? Uh, competition, it can't be you know, crazily high. Um, so there really are you know, a lots of factors to, to consider. Um, I think it's important given you know, we're here with you know, smaller businesses who are growing really fast right now to you know, a tip on that already would be be very clear on, on the keywords that you are targeting. Um, you know, don't ta try and uh, go after hundreds and hundreds of opportunities. That's, so that's definitely something. Um, and then and obviously then being dynamic is, is, as is the case for keyword research, you need to constantly keep abreast of what are new opportunities based on search volume, based on um, competition uh, and keep an eye on that and get into a good rhythm 
of monitoring that um, really. But it all falls down to who you're targeting as a business and, and what you offer. Um, so Alex, for you, you know, what, what were they specifically in the keyword research? What, what was tricky um, for you, do you think? Well, I think particularly when I first started off trying to leverage SEO content, I'm not sure that I did enough research. I think that people make quite a lot of assumptions in terms of, oh, people must be searching for this. You know, people will be saying, oh, I'm thinking of this question. So therefore, loads of other people must be thinking of this question. It's very easy to you know, be quite biased when you're inside your own company. So I think when it comes to keyword research, and I know we're going to be um, talking about this later on um, in the session, I think you really need to put yourself into the customer's shoes, into the client's shoes and say, of the people that we service, of the people that we can help, that my product or service enables them to overcome challenges, what are they typically asking? What are they typically hoping to find, hoping to get? And how can we answer them? And I think that that's something that I've definitely learned the hard way, you know, written loads of content and thought, hang on, this is this is grade A stuff. Why is, why is no one interested in this? And that's because that's just not the behavior that you're seeing online. And, and I think you're absolutely right when it comes to research. It's such a critical, critical step um, in prepping your SEO um, or rather in, in preparing for your content, um, which too often can go on, you know, overlooked. So I think let's keep those questions coming. Really good to hear some of them already. Um, we'll also be doing a session um, at, at, at the end of this where we'll cover off any questions that we haven't managed to answer. Um, and hopefully we can answer some of those questions throughout as well. So first of all, like I mentioned, we we're gonna do a really brief intro into what SEO content actually is. Now, there's often a pretty tired joke that does the rounds, which encapsulates why it is important to um, optimize your business, your product, your services for search engines. And it's often said that the best place to hide a dead body is page two of Google search results, or if you're being particularly cruel, page one of Bing. Now, what, what, what is it that this joke's kind of trying to say? Well, effectively, if it's on page two of Google search results, no one's going to find it. I think if you think about your own personal experiences, right, with Googling something or going on a search engine, I think you know the levels of desperation that you've got to when you start clicking on page two, page three, you know, any further than that, and you're running into real trouble, right? Um, so I think you know what this tries to tries to say is that no one's really going on to page two it's got to be something that appears on page one for it to be worthwhile or have any kind of interest um, in your audience but if we try and quantify this in terms of actual proof points 95 percent of all traffic on search engines go to page one i mean I don't think that I'm saying anything that people weren't expecting, if you imagine your own experiences, but that does go to show, you know, 95% is a huge majority that are going to page one. And the people that are going to page two or three, I think, you know, it's often because they haven't found the right answer to their search query and they need to amend their search query. But even within page one, you have so much room for optimization as well, right? almost a third of all of your traffic is going to that first result, result number one. That's an enormous amount of the traffic, right? So really, that's what you're trying to do. That's what you're trying to achieve. You're trying to get as high as you can on that first page as well. Now, one of the responses, which might be what some of you are thinking about is, I don't know, I think I don't really have time for SEO. Can I just pay to get rid of the problem? Can I just run some Google ad campaigns? Can I do my PPC in order to circumnavigate all of this stress, all of this headache? Do you know what? There's absolutely a place for PPC campaigns and advertising. But do bear in mind 
again, the vast, vast majority of clicks are going to those organic search results. So yes, do have a paid search strategy when you are considering different channels to leverage in order to you know, generate more leads to your business, generate more customers and revenue. But remember, paid search campaigns are only gonna take you so far. You can only pay to get rid of the problem to a certain extent. And that's why search engine optimization is something that you don't try and wanna you know, hack your way around or, or try and shortcut. It's something that is still really worth the time and energy into getting right. Um, in terms of a definition, you know, SEO content, there's lots of other types of content out there, I'm sure, as we know about, you know, if we're sat on a webinar right now, there's a good example. In a nutshell, it's content with the specific intention of helping your site, or more specifically, individual pages within your site to rank highly on places like Google. So how do you do that? What are the components that are really important to consider in SEO content in order to achieve that objective of ranking highly? Well, first and foremost, you've got keyword strategy. That's something already, Adam, that you touched on before, right? You've got to understand who you're targeting, the questions that they're asking, and how you can answer them. Of course, we're going to talk about structure. We're going to talk about optimized posts. But you've really got to think about not just how the page looks and feels, but also how it fits into your wider website as well. And finally, copywriting. You can do all the right steps, but the quality of what you produce is obviously going to be paramount to the success or lack of it when it comes to your SEO content. Now, I've picked out three things there. The reality is there are other considerations, right? You've got things like your page speed, of course. Slow websites, absolute nightmare for people when it comes to trying to convert any of their traffic. You want your design to be responsive. You want to make sure that it's mobile first. You want to make sure that people who are viewing it on their smartphone are going to have as good an experience, if not better, actually, than the people who are viewing it on desktop particularly as more and more traffic shifts to that device. Of course, you want to be doing some of the other maintenance bits and pieces. Broken links are a big no-no. Reducing the number of redirects you have, et cetera, et cetera. It's not to say that these aren't important, but for the purposes of SEO content, we're really going to be focusing on, the, on, on those top three um, on, this, uh, on this webinar. And last but not least, how does SEO content differ to other forms of content? Well, for a start, it's more technical. That doesn't mean that it's more difficult as such. It just means that there are certain hoops that you're gonna to need to jump through in order to get it right. So I won't go talking about keywords again, because we're gonna cover that in a little bit, but think about things such as images, how do visual assets play a part in your post? You want to be th thinking really, really clearly, does my title capture attention? Does my title make you want to click on that page one? Or does that title just not really do anything for the user and therefore is not going to generate a lot in the form of traffic? And then, of course, you've got some of these tweaks behind the content that we talked about. But we're not going to go too heavily into the technical side of SEO for the purposes of today, this is really more about content creation. Secondly, it's definitely a bit more structured than other types of content, right? In the sense that there are best practices for production, actually. There are some, um, some pretty clear do's and do nots that work across the board for SEO content. There's a million ways to create an ebook. There's a million ways to run a webinar. There's a million ways to do other types of content, such as white papers, you know, thought leadership pieces, podcasts, etc. But when it comes to SEO, it's actually a little bit less subjective. You know, it, 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 it does have its tick boxes that if you check, you can really do well in. And, and that's what I personally really like about SEO. I know that if I'm doing X, Y, and Z, which we're going to touch on now, that I have a very good chance of producing decent SEO content. So we've talked about these three. 
but what does the impact of these three actually have on your business actually have on your bottom line and this is what i mean about taking seo away from being this black box to actually being something that you can see benefits a startup well we decided to pick a startup we decided to pick ourselves because we have in the last six to eight months really ramped up our seo content strategy as well thankfully with the folks at inflow with Adam's support. Um, and what I wanted to show you today is concrete examples, real life numbers that take away the sort of mystique of SEO content and actually show what it can deliver if done well. There's absolutely ways that we can do it better, but here's a start of the 10 for you guys. Um, so you wanna match your expertise with your audience. At Sales for Startups, we really focus on sales strategy, sales leadership, sales technology, and revenue operations. Those are four of the areas that we said, okay, this is where we can help our audience. And these are the types of things that our audience is searching for. Sales strategy during COVID. You know, how do you um, motivate a remote sales team? How do you mentor high-performing salespeople? What kind of technology do you need in order to make your sales process more efficient? What is revenue ops? How can I apply it to my business? These kind of things. So Adam, I think I'll be really interested to know from you because you really helped us with this to begin with, how you think that a business should consider what keywords they they end up producing how they end up matching their expertise with their audience what do you reckon i think you know the first thing is to mention is we you know as a as a company have a very kind of strict um onboarding process um in order to conduct keyword research for businesses and so you know, when when we speak to businesses they're, they're the first to say you know what their domain experts of how much you know, years of expertise they've done and, and their qualifications, et cetera, et cetera, and et cetera. And it's actually really hard for businesses to actually do what you've just done there, Alex, and say, these are our four pillars. These are the three, four things that we are experts of. Um, normally you need an independent, you know, independent party to tell you that. So I think what's so important at yeah, this stage where you're, you're looking at SEO content, you're looking in-house and thinking, right, we, we know we need to do it. Is actually for is actually asking a few key questions um, to yourselves, and firstly saying, you know, if we are going to say there's three four things that we do, what are what are those three four things? Um, and it's actually I think it's, it comes to the next slide later, Alex. But what we what we've done is basically identify a set of questions that really help draw out the key things that you do. So who is your ICP? Um, how are you getting customers at the moment? What are you domain experts of? And it's actually that kind of core organizational, organizational framework then, then allows you to go and conduct keyword research in a sensible way. If that bit is done and rushed, then what happens then is there's so much time actually wasted in every part of the process before you even write the content. The tendency of what we see with businesses is they're so keen just to hit the ground running and write as many articles as they can yeah. In a week but actually this part here what you've just done there and say right these are four pillars of expertise everything anchors to that everything we're going to write on our site is going to be really linked back to these four things and actually it's then very easy to have to understand what you do to navigate what you do and if you you know you are a prospect and you need sales support in one of those areas it's it's very clear where to go to and every bit of keyword research is then anchored to that um and that's what a lot of businesses um, they know these things, but it's just making sure that the, you go through, a, go through a process and ask those questions to get to that. And that's what's so important. So in our case, obviously, it's SEO, it's content marketing, it's site mm -hmm. structure, it's on page. We're very clear about our three, four pillars. Um, but, you know, first takeaway at the moment would be think of your businesses as three or four pillars. What are those things? And get that nailed down makes sense and and like you said i think you're going to touch on some of those questions to ask yourself which um you know some people on the call might be keen to to sort of test against their own business um a little bit later on so what i'll do is i'll 
I'll breeze through these next couple of slides and give you an opportunity to get into get into the meat of the issue. Um, so, what does becoming an expert in those four domains, for example, as I just touched on, you know, what what's the outcome of being an expert in that? Well, it obviously has an effect on something called your domain rating. And like I said, total transparency, I'm going to show you exactly what it was like at sales to startups and how it changed over quite a quick period of time, relatively speaking, in, in, in the SEO world. This is a change that happened in less than four months. We're not talking about two, three, four, five years here. You know, people often say, you know, the impact that SEO has really takes some time. Um, we don't really have the, you know, we don't have the luxury of time at the moment. We really need to prove X, Y, Z in 12 months and, and, and SEO therefore isn't important to us. Well, actually, the more of an authority that you can be on your keywords, on your chosen subjects, the more of an impact it's going to have on how Google or other search engines view your site. Before we started talking about these, you know, we were kind of, yeah, languishing around the, the, the eight out of a hundred mark. This is out of a hundred. And in less than four months, by focusing on those four areas or whatever the pillars might be in your position, you know, we were able to triple our domain rating. I will say it's not just SEO content. There are some other considerations around SEO that you should, you should think about. But being an authority and being a place that Google trusts sending its visitors that's when you can see the impact that your expertise is having and that in turn will generate more and more organic traffic and in fact we can visualize that as well so we launched our site in july 2017 which is why these pillars here are taking you over the six month period at the end of every year to show you the growth in organic traffic so we launched sales of startups, the site in 2017. Now, obviously in 2018, when you're starting at such a low baseline, there was a massive increase, but you can already see in 2019, things are slowing down a little bit. It's doubled, it's more than doubled, but there's no specific strategy on how we're gonna to continue to drive that organic search traffic. Come July, 2020, last year, when we started to focus on SEO content, we more than tripled our organic search traffic. Um, now, traffic's great. What does that actually mean for your business? I'll, I'll, I'll touch on in, in the next couple of slides. But Adam, I think, you know, when we were discussing this before, you mentioned there are some inputs into organic search traffic, right? It's not the be all and end all. There are some some metrics that you want to have in mind when it comes to trying to drive that number. Um, would you mind sharing a little bit about that with us? Yeah, I think, you know, when it comes to metrics, there's first thing is that there seems to be a lot to consider. Yeah, GA is obviously, Google Analytics is obviously important in looking at traffic, looking at clicks, looking at impressions, but we at Inflow um, really make sure you look at three forms of metrics in addition to GA to, to Google Analytics. That's really, really important um, and really recommend that everyone here starts to look at those. So number one is as an organization with resource mobilized, um, what does uh, productivity look like? Um, you know, Alex here has, has been an amazing advocate really because he, he's followed our framework and guidelines to grow. Uh, and the first thing is, is productivity. So we suggest, for example, you should be writing at least an article per week. Um, and that is totally in, in your control. Um, so that's the first thing, productivity um, in, in getting generating an article uh, per week and at least 800 words. Um, the second metric that's really important is, is then performance. Um, what does performance look like alongside GA? Well, actually, you need to start to really track keywords and where you're ranking in orga organic listings. Someone I noticed asked, you know, is this relevant to solely organic listings? The answer is yes. Um, with performance, you need to know what keywords you're ranking for already, where you are, what position, and then track the changes over time as you uh, ramp up your productivity metrics. So obviously the two are intertwined. And then finally, um, health metrics are really important of your site. Um, 
So for example, there's, there's, there's tools out there that can give you like a, a score for your site, which is quite nice score out of a hundred. Um, and you want to then sort of benchmark what good looks like um, against that and then see it and what, what you'll really get with most audit tools is like an issue log um, and just tell you how many things you've got wrong with your site, which is typical, yeah. which is always feels quite, quite kind of painful. And you normally go for a walk at that point and a, and a pond <laughs> by the pond. Um, but uh, it's, it's not all doom and gloom. You can then of the say 60, 70 issues that you might have in the site, you've then got to be like, right, which ones are actually important? And again, more questions leads to more questions, but you know that there are ways around that. Um, there's a lot of uh, content online of what things you should look for. Uh, things like H1s, for example, H2s, headings, this is headings one, heading twos are important, 404 pages, backlinks, internal links, lots of different things. So just to, uh, just to step back a second there and zoom out, GA, really, really important for metrics, traffic, clicks, impressions. Alongside that, productivity metrics, make sure you get in a good workflow. Make sure um, that's happening. Ideally, one a week, an article a week. Uh, performance metrics, which keywords are you really tracking? Which keywords do you really care about being higher up in organic listings? You know, there's so many SEO agencies that will promise you page one on Google. But for what? You know, question, if someone ever says we're going to get you on page one, page one for Google, okay, for, for what keyword? What, what, what are we targeting? That's so, so important. And then that relates to, to search volume. That relates to competition, obviously, as well. And as I say, finally, the health metrics. So that, that's a summary of, of the metrics that I recommend that you um, have a uh, keep a close eye on. Makes sense. Thanks. And like I said, um, you know, before we jump into the next section, and Adam, and Adam, I think you're going to kind of take over at that point. Organic traffic is one thing, and being able to say that you've grown, you know, by 117 percent or 204 percent or whatever it might be, you know, double, triple. What does that actually mean to your business though? Um, so you can see in terms of the inbound leads generated through organic search, because of, of course those take time and this is across the whole year. Um, we've grown, we, we, we've doubled effectively our inbound leads generated through organic search last year as a result of that traffic that we've you know, steadily been increasing through organic content. And what does that increase? What does that doubling in organic leads mean? Well, we've actually increased as well as a result the revenue which we've generated most importantly through organic search and that's where you know it's it's that that moment where you're watching a film and and, and you hear one of the actors say the title you know this is where the 114 comes from in um in, in the title when we say leveraging seo can drive these kind of changes these are not vanity metrics here we're not just exclusively looking at organic search traffic. We're really saying that it actually pays out in the end. It pays dividends to be able to focus your efforts on this and see the growth year after year after year. And, you know, I can't wait until we do something similar to this next year, Adam, or we can take a look back and say, and here's what happened in 2021 as a result of doing it. I absolutely believe in what you said about, you know, production, um and um that consistency of one or two we we, we do two um posts uh, a week really pays dividends in the end so yeah it's just giving you guys a flavor of, of what's possible but enough about sales of startups and the impact it had we obviously want to show you the impact that it can have at your business as well um before we do that though just a couple of mistakes to kind of avoid or, or pitfalls to try and avoid, if you like, when it comes to kicking this off and immersing yourself in SEO content. Don't just focus on traffic. Like I said, it's a bit of a vanity metric. It's all well and good knowing that you've had this number of thousands of people coming to your site each month. Great. But if they're not purchasing, if they're not booking a demo, if they're not trying to you know, get in contact with you, fill in a form, whatever it might be, Ultimately, who cares? Of course, some businesses are, you know, founded on that. It might be a blog that advertises and therefore site traffic is the be all and end all. But I think the vast majority of people on this call are, are really looking for that impact on their bottom line. The second thing is it's not short term thinking. Some of those graphs I showed you, they are over a period of one, two, three, four years, right? You can have quick wins like that domain rating, 
which only took less than four months. You can have quick wins in terms of producing great pieces of content week in, week out. But do think about the long term here. And it's you know, something that I always like to think about. If you think, oh, it's going to take me five years from now, right? 2026 to see any kind of impact. So you decide to not do it. At some point, you're going to be in 2026 and you won't have done it. So really think about the fact that, okay, whilst this may take some time to embed before we see results, you know, it's not a get rich quick scheme, start the investment now and it will pay dividends later down the line. Third and, and, and finally, you know, we, we've talked about keywords a lot here. We've only got four pillars that sales startups. I don't think, and Adam, please obviously correct me if I'm wrong, or I actually think you're going to be talking about keywords in a bit more detail, but you know, that, that's a perfectly acceptable number to have. You don't need a thousand phrases. Really think about your customer. Really think about, you know, the word salespeople, for example. Am I suddenly going to be getting a load of traffic from people who are looking for salespeople as candidates and their recruiters and things like that? Really make sure that you're targeting who your actual customers are or who you actually want your customers to be. Um, any other mistakes, Adam, that you, that, you, that you think I might have left off here? No, I think that was good. I think the, I think the one to really watch out for is, is spray gunning with keywords and thinking that you're going to target 400 keywords. I really think that's the main one um, to watch out for because that's, if you don't have that, that foundation, that scientific foundation of these are our pillars, these are our four pillars. The question there I saw about what if our pillars are the same um, or sound the same to the ICP and be really clear though, that it, 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 try and have fewer pillars. That would be my suggestion actually. Um, and then be really targeted in keyword approach as opposed to thinking I might sound the same in that way. It's really important to have, be really, really clear on that. So three pillars, four pillars max and not targeting loads and loads and loads of keywords is actually fair, you know, fairly straightforward in that sense. Um, the hardest part I think is actually, is, is getting going um, with this. And you, know, you, see, you see the results you've got, Alex, um, but you know, what does your workflow look like now? I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, okay, got these results. You, know, you mentioned two posts per week. Um, how do you go, you know, for example, how do you go about organizing that workflow and what, what are things you, you um, adhere to in making sure that you stick to it? Do you, do you schedule time in your, in your diary and say, you know, Tuesday morning is, is just solely reserved for, for SEO content and then Wednesdays, email campaigns and other things. And you know, that's so important, I think. Yeah. And to tell you the truth, it's not far off that, um, you know, we, we, we carve out a bit of time on Mondays to make sure that our posts are written, our posts are scheduled to go out on WordPress is, is who we use and who um, Inflow integrate. But I think the, the ease, that efficiency definitely comes with the tool. And um, Adam, I know you're going to be touching on that. So keen to jump straight into it in the last 20 minutes about, okay, you've given us the why. You know, you've shown us what's possible. Let's get into the how now. Um, so how do you get started? Um, what are some of the things, Adam, that we want to be considering before we dive straight, you know, headfirst into creating that content? Yeah, absolutely. Look, the next part of the presentation is, is kind of over to me a bit more. Um, and there's a few, there's kind of three, there's four key areas I want, I want to discuss is number one is kind of, a setup and questions to ask yourself as an organ, you know, as an organization, um, and be able to answer those things. That's the setup. Then it's kind of the uh, content strategy side of things. So, i.e., keyword research, making sure that is done properly, scientifically. Um, do's and don'ts around that. We have touched on it already a bit. Third thing is then production um, and creation and getting into a consistent flow. Uh, as Alex is doing, carving out time on Monday to do. Um, in the production, many do's and don'ts and things that to consider in writing an optimized post. And it links so heavily with uh, crafting an optimized post. Uh, post. So I'll get into that. Uh, and then finally, metrics. So that's account setup, um, then strategy, then production creation, uh, and then metrics. And they're, they're the biggest sort of takeaways I could give. Uh, on, on, on everything really. So the first thing is, um, is set up. So 
we work with hundreds and hundreds of organizations now. Um, and, you know, it's probably taken us 500 businesses to come up with a process um, that genuinely is repeatable and works. And I mean that, and I'm sure there's founders on this call who, who feel that pain of uh, constantly building the crank uh, to, to then wonder when is it actually going to work properly and be repeatable. Uh, we certainly felt that, uh, felt that pain uh, in the process, but we've come up with key questions that talking about it now seems really simple, um, but here's, here are some questions you can ask before you dive into SEO content, before um, maybe before you hire that, that marketing manager, or if you're new uh, to being a marketing, marketing manager in a new organization, um, or even if you are a marketing manager who's been in an organization for six, 12 months or two, three years, questions to ask yourself now to set up, set up yourself for success in the future. Okay, dokes. So the first thing would be simple question is products and services. You know, what do you offer? And that really does bind the pillars. Um, what is your, what are the areas of expertise within, within the business? You know, what is that talent within the business? Um, what does that look like? For example, what is your, uh, USP, what's uh, actually different about uh, your business to, to another business. In, in our case with Inflow, um, how we're different is um, other tools on the market um, help you with specific parts of um, the content process and the blogging process or the article building process. That is research, uh, keyword research, finding content, content, sourcing content, organizing content, planning content, post outlines, um, to editing content and falling into CMSs and optimization tools such as Yoast, um, and, and then calendar tools, social calendar tools. There's so many tools on the market. How we're, just to be clear, how we're different is that end-to-end. -end. So really know your, your USB. Be really, really clear on that, not just some waffle, um, our people, whatever it is that you hear, but be really clear in the offering what is actually different. Okay, so then be aware of your competitors. That's so important, A, to keep an eye on them, but B, you know, what keyword opportunities are they going after and being aware of the gap analysis between yourselves and, and your competitors. That's really important. So pick two, pick three competitors of your competitors and keep an eye on their, on their production. It goes back to that metrics metric we talked about earlier of um, productivity, performance, and health. Um, the first one, productivity, keep an eye on your competitor and how many blogs are they creating each week, each month, um, which will help you plan and organize uh, your resources. Next thing is, um, you know, do you mainly sell to, to other businesses, other consumers? Be really, really clear in defining your ICP. You conti you'll continue to learn about your, your customer, which is great. How will you learn? Well, through questions, through calls, through check-ins, through emails, through WhatsApps, uh, and keep a log of that. Really keep uh, tabs of that and review that. Review that every single month. You know, has our ICP slightly augmented in some way and change? Keep, um, keep hold of that. It's really, really important. Next thing is um, industries, right? So who, who do you sell to? Uh, what are the sectors you sell to? Probably three, probably four, maybe just one. Um, and as that changes, again, make sure that you feed that into your content uh, strategy and understanding of uh, your ICP. And finally, last one, before you start, blogging and sort of before you start writing more content, um, what does the marketing resource look like in the company? And if it is just one marketing manager, unless you're uh, like an octopus like Alex and can manage so many different things, you, you probably need, um, you know, potentially more resource. You might want to look at a marketing intern in the business who looks after this and does three, four, four hours a week on just on SEO content. But a marketing manager's life is so, so Busy. They're always pulled to, to different projects and sometimes, uh, you know, without any warning, you know, suddenly this presentation is suddenly the most important thing to do. So have a look at your marketing resource. Is it set up for success? If you don't have marketing resource, think about that. Obviously, that's easier than said than done. Obviously, um, resources is difficult, but you know, there are ways. Think about intern, interns and inter offering internships so if that isn't immediately possible in the next two months, three months. Um, Kickstarter schemes, for example, as well. Um, so there, there are a few things just to sort of kick off that, that, that setup that I think, um, you should definitely ask yourself. So that's the first thing. So moving on to the next thing, um, is then, uh, as I said, content strategy, which is the really the research part of things. Now, um, this is, uh, uh some, some pictures of, of inflow actually, as you can see here, uh, which I'll touch on some, some of the metrics that are covered in, in the, in the research, but then we'll get into 
production um, and focusing on an optimized post uh, and then looking at metrics as well. Research, um, obviously, I mean, it's obviously interesting. It would be very interesting to know what people are doing already when it comes to research. My, my bet would be uh, you have tried different tools such as Moz, um, SEMrush uh, or Ahrefs um, to then find out that this is a full-time job. May I keep an eye on these tools, um, keep an understanding of search volume. God, that's changing every single day. What do I do uh, or every single month? Um, and then competition levels are changing and things are dynamic. It is fundamentally the research um, section. It can be quite daunting because there are so many metrics. But again, it comes down to what are your three or four pillars or, of expertise? Um, and then you really, there's no other way using tools such as the ones I've mentioned or others such as Inflow that can really do, do the work for you. So your options at research are either literally um, jump on a uh, SEO tool such as Ahrefs, Moz, or SEMrush and do it yourself, which may be possible for some people if they have the time to do it and the expertise to do it and, you know, are probably read enough to, to understand how to do it. Or, um, or we, we, for example, could help you. The other option is obviously you don't do it or you, you look at an agency to do that. So um, things to, to look out for in the research um, part of things is anchoring back to your pillars, I would recommend you target 50 to 100 keywords um, and no more than that. Um, and each of those keywords will be related to um, those services. So it's really clear, a nice little tree diagram that you can imagine. And then things are dynamic. So every single month you want to um, be looking at your, your pillars and looking at the keywords to target um, and revising that. How can you do that? As I said, either tools um, or, or agencies or et cetera. And that's really, you are limited to those things. The metrics, as I mentioned, is search volume to look at, uh, competition, the number of keywords. Um, and I say, you know, back to the mistakes to avoid is targeting uh, too many keywords. Um, so that's research in a nutshell. I want to put a lot of emphasis into an optimized post. So I'm going to move on to the next slide, um, which is uh, around the optimized post. And Hopefully this is, a good, is going to be a good one. Um, so there's lots of things um, you can consider. And what we've done uh, for you guys today is create a, a checklist of um, four or five key areas that you can look at. And so when you come to create that first post, once you've done your strategy, once you've done your keyword research, you know which keywords to target. These are things um, that you should definitely consider in every single post that you write. Okie dokes. So the first thing is, so here they are there. So uh, it's quite small actually this, isn't it? But hopefully you can see everything in front of you. So you've got quantity, um, the post being findable, the post being readable, the post being understandable, and the post being actionable. Um, so they're the key areas to look at. So to go, through, to go through each one, so quantity, article a week, Alex is doing two a week, so let's try and catch up Alex. Um, very good. Uh, at least 800 words. So you will not rank, your content will not rank if it's uh, you know, less, at least 300 words is what you do to have to, to actually rank on organic listings for the article that you write. So um, more, it's not necessarily the more the better, but at least 800 words gets you into that kind of nicer benchmark category. So around 800 words per post. Um, then search engines make you work for it and uh, put in some banana skins as we mentioned at the start of this uh, of this webinar so um there's there's paragraph length as a factor con to consider don't have paragraphs longer than 150 words if they are that's not great for your organic and sentences same thing no longer than 20 words um also some character suggestions as well um findable uh, a few things to consider uh, you have a main title which is your your h1 but then to structure your article, have H2. So this is just the next heading down. This is telling the search engine, Google or, or Bing, um, that this is then important content, which is why it's important to actually assign an H2 or an H3. Um, don't overdo it. Sort of uh, what we would suggest, obviously, is one H1, which is the main title, uh, and then two uh, or three uh, H2s and H3s. Keyword, uh, target a keyword in every article that you write. Um, include it in the H2s, um, scatter it in the article. That's really important. Um, and then don't just write the same thing about the keyword. Um, for example, we work with a lot, a lot of accountancy firms. Um, an accountancy firm could offer bookkeeping as a service, sell uh, bookkeeping, business advisory. 
um, and say they're targeting sales bookkeeping, don't just write the same thing about sales bookkeeping. Have a different perspective linked to other research. And that brings me to linking. So linking, two forms of linking, two forms of linking. So there's backlinking where you are linking to research that you've used in the process um, from qualified and credible sources. Think about it in the checklist. Think of when you craft the post, have you know, 10, 20 websites that you always refer to and keep your finger on the pulse for. That's really important. Um, don't find yourself just scattering from one, one publisher to the next. Um, have a condensed list. Um, so back just to be clear, backlinking is two forms of link, uh, sorry, two forms of linking, backlinking and internal linking. Um, some suggestions there, as you can see, around how many and the quantity. Readable, obviously that's a nice one. Um, so bullet points, numbered list, that's all uh, fairly straightforward. Imagery wise, make sure the imagery is licensed um, and that kind of thing. And then finally, actionable. Um, some ways to make the content actionable, uh, ideally um, you know, linked to other articles or linked to um, a CTA such as a, a consultation consultation call um, with the sales team, the BD team, that's important, or a link to say a download, um, a white paper download, then monitor, ideally monitor that, that download. Um, and that's really uh, useful metrics for the, for, the, for the BD team as well. Um, so be, you, know, you can be very savvy and smart with these things. Um, so that there's kind of five areas that I think uh, should be useful for everyone on the call. Uh, so that, that's that, um, that's the optimized post. And then time for a bit of a wrap up. Uh, we've got five minutes to go. So um, what could be useful is uh, wrapping up, but also making sure any, uh, if we haven't answered any questions, any other questions as well. Yeah, thanks, Adam. And like you said, um, obviously the optimized post itself, um, if that content was a little bit small, of course, we're going to be sharing this afterwards anyway, but appreciate you taking us through um, what that looked like. I think we'll, we'll run through the last couple of slides, which are just our sign off, and then we can jump into the, into the chat to see what questions we haven't answered throughout. Um, obviously, if anyone is interested in um, how Inflow can help solve some of the challenges that Adam touched on there, you know, remembering all of these things, the, the bit that I find really fascinating, just to pick one really quickly, is um, that sentence length and paragraph length. I always get that wrong. It's always way too long. 20 words in a sentence is, you feel like that should be enough, but you always end up waffling. <laughs> Um, and the, the tool in, in Flow that helps you keep an eye on that, make sure that you're trying to create something that's as readable as possible is, um, is really, really valuable. So I'd encourage um, anyone on the call who's interested to check out Inflow, to book a demo with the team there, with Adam. Um, and uh, in terms of us, you can check out some of the content on our side as well. You can see some of the ways that we have used Inflow to produce content ourselves. If you check out resources, there's an insight section where we talk about some of those four pillars, right? Whether it's sales leadership, sales technology, sales strategy, or revenue operations as well. So check it out. Um, and of course, organic content is one way of increasing revenue at your startup. There are plenty of others. I'm not going to do the the same old sales pitch, but when we share this around, we've left a little link there for you guys as well, should you be interested in booking a call with our team. But big thanks to Adam. Um, before we jump into the q and I've got a couple of links to his and my Instagram. Uh, Instagram, that's not going to be very handy. <laughs> LinkedIn um, here. Mine's just Alex, I will be checking out your Instagram now you've mentioned it. Please check out my Instagram. Exciting. My Instagram is incredibly boring photos about my incredibly boring life. Um, but I have uh, I popped our email addresses down here just in case there's not time to cover absolutely everything. But look, we've got a couple of minutes. Let's jump into the QA. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, and yeah, let's see what we haven't answered so far. So let me um, double check here. So, um, when we say an SEO article, I think that's this is a really good point as well. When we say an article, do we mean a blog post? You've already answered, yep, Adam. But for anyone on anyone in the call who hasn't seen that response, yeah, we're we're using the two words interchangeably. 
that might not be strictly correct, but um, yeah, that's absolutely what we mean. Um, in terms of, um, so Sarah's left this comment to say, really interesting, thank you. Um, Self-employed garden designer, what web platforms would you recommend to make your own website? Not loads of budget, but would like to learn and am a beginner. If we put the kind of SEO slant on that, Adam, what what tools do you think are um, probably best for a beginner that gives them some of that guidance around SEO as well when it comes to building their platform? I can speak about WordPress. You know, we, we leverage WordPress ourselves at the moment. Um, but any others you think, Adam, that, that are worth Sarah checking out? WordPress is good, it has the most uh, ability to link with other plugins. And um, so when it, you'll be able to probably set your website quicker with a Wix or a Squarespace, probably, uh, probably a Wix. But that's just setting it up. The bit when it gets to optimizing the site, you're then going to struggle with it linking with other forms and plugins that are going to help um, optimize the site. So that would be my answer. Got it, got it. Well, hopefully that was useful for you, Sarah. And then Caroline's asked, could you say that Instagram posts were SEO content? Definitely not mine. Um, <laughs> but uh, could you say that Instagram posts were SEO content? Um, how would you make sure that helps with organic SEO? I have a WordPress website with WooCommerce and she shared a URL there. That's actually an interesting one. Honestly, I don't know that. Adam, is, is an Instagram post considered SEO content? I kind of struggle to see how it would be. It's almost got its own search within the platform using hashtags and things like that. And that's your discovery as, a, as, as opposed to, you know, using Google to find images on Instagram. That's not, tip, that's not a typical user journey, but any thoughts on that? No, it's totally different. It's nothing, it's nothing to do with organic. Um, what you can do though, is link from the Instagram post to um, your URL of your website or an article. So then you could then basically feed your organic through that way if you've got a load of followers. Um, if you don't have a lot of followers, build up the followers through valuable content, interesting content like Alex's Instagram, um, and then obviously link to link to the website and do it that way. But the two are two are different. Got it. Um, what I want to do is make sure, obviously, that we've answered any of the uh, questions as well. So we've got any tips. Oh, I think you answered that one actually already. Um, so I'll give that one a thumbs up. Um, uh, Ashley also followed up to say, to clarify, three different terms are used by our ICPs interchangeably to describe one of our pillars. So I think this is kind of where keywords come into it, unless I'm um, mistaken, that actually there's one pillar and there's three sort of, there's different terminology of how to talk about the same thing. I can see there being value in making sure you capture all three versions or certainly the ones that you think are the most popular. I guess this is where research is really important, Adam, but yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. You know, have one pillar, but then exactly you'll cover it in the keywords, the keyword research. So you'll be targeting two or three keywords based on data, i.e. search volume and competition to um, make sure that net is um, not too wide, but wide, uh, and as effective as possible to capture that audience. So that will be included in the keywords if there is sufficient data behind that. So that way would work. Got it. Um, Carol asked us if um, we could show an example of a good optimized post. I'd say, Adam, you you kind of ran through the framework as to what's, a, what's an optimized post, um, the title, et cetera. But what I can do is follow up maybe with um, any kind of guidance or a couple of examples um, when I share these slides as well to everyone who attended. So hopefully you can see a real life example, Carol. Otherwise, like I mentioned, um, check out Inflow's site, our site as well, just to see some examples if you are curious um, and really interested to know your feedback as well. Um, Nick asked, all of the content, um, should all of the content be on our own web page? What about blog platforms like Medium or a LinkedIn blog post? Is it worth distributing the same content on different platforms to have greater reach or is it better to stay on your own website? I'll, I'll, I'll give that one to you, Adam. Great question. And the answer is, is have both. So yeah. write articles, uh, blogs that sit on your website, which improve your organic um, listing presence. 
Um, and then it comes to distribution across different socials. Um, don't have you know seven or eight different socials to worry and manage and care about. Do manage one or two, two or three well. Uh, LinkedIn or Twitter sounds a bit LinkedIn here. Uh, Medium and then share that content on there uh, as well to to amplify the reach. So publishing to your to your website and then distributing across uh, impactful socials as well. Um, and that will obviously encourage debate, discussion, and, and again, hopefully click throughs to, to the website. Fab. And yeah. um, I think time for one, go on, two last questions we've got here. So one from Josh is, what is the, this is an interesting one, what is the best way to optimize video content for SEO? Because I have heard, I might be wrong, but I have heard that you can, you can do some things to optimize um, particularly um, image SEO and the way that you format file names, alt text, things like that. What about video, um, Adam? Actually, I'd be put my hands up to say I don't know loads about the video space. Um, we completely focus primarily on articles and long form. So I'd be wary of giving out any advice too much around that, um, if I'm being completely candid. I would be able to link um, jo is a Josh in yeah. with one of our partners who looks after that. Oh, fab. Yeah. If you can put Josh in contact with them, that would yeah. be amazing. So yeah, I think this is predominantly focused on written content, Josh, but there, it sounds like there are people in it. There are ways to, uh, to, to, to help with video. Um, I quite like this question. I think it's a good, good, good one to round off because I know we're already over uh, three o'clock, but what will SEO look like in 2022 and beyond? You know, what are, what are the things coming up on the radar, Adam, that you're, that you're aware of is it some changes that google are talking about i know they're fairly cryptic about you know how their algorithm works and things like that and there's a million and one different factors that go into it but anything on your radar that you think is worth paying attention to um to to keeping in mind for for those on the call i'd say you know, the trend of seo specifically on page is um, moving towards uh, encouraging writers to write more educational content ultimately um, so there's been you know 3,000 updates last year from google um, moving away from just uh, again kind of just keyword stuffing and peppering articles with keywords to encourage more kind of nuanced things like paragraph sentence length uh, reading ease is such a big one so the trend is just moving towards making it easier to read more educational better researched and that will only just increase and of the 3000 updates google makes you know there's only a few kind of macro key ones to look out for um so yeah that would be my main thing is always make it's not just the right about you know writing in a robotic way it's making it as interesting um and practical and helpful and that will, will always be kind of the future i think um i remember the um the head of SEO at Treatwell, where I was before I joined Sales for Startups, saying that, you know, good SEO is good UX, right? Ultimately, if you are delivering something that's really um, readable, that's really easy to um, understand the content that you're sharing, you know, anything that delivers a great user experience is ultimately going to be great for SEO as well. So, um, yeah, good to hear that Google still rates that as important um so i'm gonna i'm gonna sneak one more bonus one in um are you still penalized for exact copy on your website and if you disseminate across other platforms partners websites so any yes <laughs> sure yes, yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> um don't duplicate content without backlinking and honoring the originator really is the answer to that right. Simple as that really, make sure to backlink, make sure where you take a quote, whatever it is, an extract from another place, um, honor the research, uh, otherwise uh, search engines will penalize you. Um, then the other thing on that is never take, if you are taking research from another party as part of the article you're building, um, typically never take more than 10% uh, of that article. And if you do take any of it, as I say, make sure to accredit it. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, we're coming up to 10 past three now. Massive thanks to everyone who joined in, gave us loads of questions to think about there. Um, hope you guys find um, found this webinar useful. Like I mentioned, we're going to be sharing um, the content afterwards. So if there were any things that 
you know, uh, were, were rushed over or that we skimmed, please do take a look. You'll find Adam and my LinkedIn profile there, not Instagram. <laughs> You'll find our email addresses. Um, so any questions, please do shout. If they're SEO related, I strongly encourage you to send them to Adam and not me. Um, and um, yeah, with that, a massive thank you to Adam as well. Really appreciate you coming on, mate. Um, it was always, always good to have a chat. Um, and yeah, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Speak to you guys soon. Thanks, everyone. Pleasure. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.